Hey Biochem, it is second protein structures video. This is on protein secondary structure. Um, after watching this video, you should be able to describe the three types of helices and the two types of beta sheets. Draw the hydrogen bond pattern for each, so one for a helice, one for a beta, or the, each of the beta sheets. Um, describe the stabilizing interaction for each of them. What is the stabilizing net interaction and where is it located within the polymer? And then describe the location of the backbone um, atoms and the side chain atoms for each type. So where are the backbone atoms for the helices? Where are the side chain atoms for the helices? Same thing with the beta sheets. All right, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we're going to talk about is just what is secondary structure? Secondary also represented by a two with like a degree sign, that's secondary structure for a protein. Remember, we're talking about proteins, not DNA, not RNA. Okay, so if you remember, um, actually, let's back up. So secondary structure, these are localized, that's the key word here, areas of repeating structure within a protein. So if you remember my diagram, my simple cartoon diagram for the primary structure where we go from N to C terminus, this is the primary structure, and the primary structure describes like the order of the amino acids, alanine, arginine, glycine, cysteine, histidine, let's put a whole bunch of threonines in there, um, tyrosine, tryptophan, and so forth. The secondary structure describes how within that sequence um, we might have areas where there is localized folding to a C here. So this would be an area of localized folding. This would be one type of helix. And this is another area. I'm going to add some arrows here. Oop, that does not look so great. Um, another area where these are sheets. And these pieces right here, these are the secondary structural elements. Secondary structure. Okay, so we're going to go through and describe a few different kinds of these, but it's localized. Like, think about these are the amino acids that are close to each other in sequence. So this might be amino acid um, 4 through 15. This one might be 36 to... 41. I don't know. I'm just making these numbers up. Um, but they're near each other in sequence. They're neighbors. They're not far in sequence. They're near in sequence and they're repeating structures. All right, so let's go ahead um, and get started on the different types. So what causes this? Like what causes the secondary structure to form? Well, it's a very specific sequence of amino acids. So like in the previous video with primary structure, those sequence of amino acids that are near each other can be used to predict secondary structure. So the specific order of amino acids gives rise to a helix. Um, but it's the sequence of amino acids that allows for hydrogen bonding along the backbone. Okay, so the key parts here are, oh, I don't even know what colors to do. It's hydrogen bonding. That is the primary interaction in, that stabilizes secondary structure. And it's hydrogen bonding only with the backbone atoms. So this is your NCC, 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 NCC. Side chains do not play any part in this whatsoever. And again, we're going to talk about two kinds, helices and the sheets. So let's start with the helices. Okay, I'm going to start by drawing. And this is how, if you were asked to draw a helix on your exam or on a homework, here's what I would expect. Okay, let's just draw them like this. And this is, might be my N terminus, and this is my C terminus. Okay, so we're talking about hydrogen bonding along the backbone. So let's 
say that this curly Q right here represents only the backbone. Okay, so you, there's no side chains here. So going along this curly Q, it's NCC, 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 NCC. I'm going to put the nitrogen, hydrogen of an amide, so peptide backbone, which would mean there's an R group coming off here. So this is my NCC. And then my carbonyl of that same, let's say, amino acid coming off the top. And then there's a few other residues as you trace this around, but I'm just going to draw these in because they're the most important. I'm just doing this for each of the turns. This is really hard to draw with this pen. Okay, so one thing I want you to notice is that all these carbonyls are the carbonyl of the amide or peptide bond, and all the nitrogens pointing down are the nitrogens of the amide or peptide bond. And what's going on in between them, there's the hydrogen bond there, hydrogen bond there, hydrogen bond there. So it's the hydrogen bond that is stabilizing this interaction. What you'll also notice is that all the carbonyls are pointing up. So I'm going to put the little dipole here, dipole here, dipole here, dipole here. And if you added up all these dipoles, another stabilizing force of a, a helix is what's called the helical dipole. Because all the carbonyls point one way and all the nitrogens point the other way, there's this overall helical dipole um, that can be also stabilizing. I just think it's really interesting. So that's how I would expect you to draw the hydrogen bond pattern in, an out, in a, any type of helix. Now, it turns out there's three kinds of helices. Okay, there's three kinds of helices. The first one and the most common is the alpha helix. And the alpha helix is a hydrogen bond between residues or amino acids that are um, exactly 3.6 uh, residues, oh hold on, actually, let's, I'll do, I'll say the residues that are about between one residue and one residue that is four away. Okay, I don't know if this is making any sense. So if this is residue, let's say this is residue six, then in an alpha helix this would be 10, this would be 14, um, and this would be 18. So the hydrogen bond is between residues that are approximately four away. Now there's actually a more specific number and that is a it's 3.6 residues we'll say per turn of the alpha helix. So the alpha helix in reality kind of looks like a big giant cylinder. So each residue in an alpha helix um, you have 3.6 residues per turn. That's going to be important for your homework. Okay. The second one that you need to know is called, oops, I didn't want to be in that color, is called a 310 helix. And this is between residues that are I plus 3. So these residues would be 3 away, or in other words, it's 3.3 .3 residues per turn. So 3.3 .3 comes when you... Try and divide 3 into 10. You get 3.3. .3. That's how you can remember it. So it's a much tighter turn. So the cylinder of the helix is, is skinnier. And then the last one is what's called a pi helix. These are super rare. But these are um, I plus 5. And these are, uh, for the residues per turn, this is 4.1 residues per turn, and yes, these decimals are important in this situation. Now, when I talk about this 3.6, 3.1, and 4.1, I have another figure here that will hopefully help it make it a little bit easier to see. I'm going to move to that one. 
Okay, I'm sorry this is a little pixelated. It took, takes me a really long time to find these really nice figures, but we have the Alpha Helix that is 3.6 residues. This is 3.3, and this is 4.1 residues per turn. Again, biochemistry, super visual science, so that's why we're looking at this. Um, red is oxygen, blue is nitrogen, all the gray are the carbons. So all it's shown right here are the backbones. This view right here is from the top looking down. And these are what would be called side views. So this is from the top of the cylinder looking down. So you hopefully you can see in the Alpha Helix we have one, two, three, and a little chunk there which represents the 0.6. So that's 3.6 residues per turn. The Alpha Helix again is a much tighter turn per helix, one, two, three residues per turn, and if you were to see the next little turn of it, you'd see it would be a 3.3. And then the Pi Helix, that's the widest one. That's one, two, three, four, and then point one is a little teeny tiny guy right behind this. Um, so now you know the number of residues per turn for each of the different kinds of alpha helices. The primary stabilizing interaction are the hydrogen bonds um, between backbone atoms, between the backbone atoms, the side chains are sticking out of the sides. And the question to ask then is, if there are 3.6 residues per turn, how many degrees separate each residue? Okay, so if I've got uh, a chart here, let's say this is zero degrees, this is 180, 90, 270, this would also be 360. If I have a residue every 3.6, that means I will have a residue at about um, 100 degrees. So every 100 degrees, I'll have a new residue here and one here and I hope that that little tidbit of information helps you on your homework. You should be able to figure out for the 310 helix and the pi helix how many degrees of separation um, are between each of the residues. Now the last thing that you need to understand or you need to have some sort of visual comprehension of is where the side chains are. So right now you know where the backbone atoms are. They're in the center of the helix and they're what causes this twisty turny. The side chains radiate on the outside. So here's a really nice picture of um, down the chain. So this again would be considered the top view and this is the side view. And the side chain atoms have been added in. So all of the hydrogen bonding is happening in the center. Here's where the hydrogen bonds are that stabilize the pi, or I'm sorry, that stabilize the helix, whether it's the pi, the alpha, or the 310. And these are the side chains. So the side chains radiate out from the center. They stick outside of the helix, outside of the helix, outside of the cylinder. This is a, a side view. So here in the center, here's where the H bonds are between backbone atoms only, and the side chains are out here. So if you notice, the side chains aren't playing any major role at all in the formation of the helix. It's only the backbone atoms. Only the backbone. Please don't forget this. Do, 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 do. Only the backbone um, and its hydrogen bonding with, or I should say between, 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 between um, backbone amides or amidos. Okay, um, those are the three types of, types of helices. We're going to move on to the tube types 
of sheets and I'm going to draw them first and then we'll talk about where the side chains are on these and then we'll be all done. Okay, let's start with the two types of beta sheets are parallel and anti-parallel. We're going to draw them first and then we'll talk about where the side chains are and like I said before, this is again hydrogen bonding along the backbone. We're going to start with the anti-parallel because I think they're the easiest to draw. Alright, so here we go. In this type of drawing, make sure that you zigzag your backbone. Alright, so I'm going to go, there's NCC, NCC, and I'm just doing the backbone because that's where the hydrogen bonding is occurring, NCC. And these squiggly lines represent that the polymer goes on and on and on because it's a protein. Um, I've got um, just a couple residues drawn here because you don't need to do that many. You just need to kind of get the point across. Now, coming off of the first one, going from left to right, there will be a hydrogen bond to this carbonyl um, along a residue that's a little bit down the line. And within the same residue, there's a second hydrogen bond. Okay, and then we go on down the line, NCC. If you space this out just right, they should line up. Okay, so the first, oh, and then here, and you can connect your hydrogen bonds here and here. Okay, so there's a few things to notice. This is going from N to C, and this one is C to N. Oops, let me add that in. So this is N to C here. That's what makes them anti-parallel, because they're running in opposite directions. Now the interesting thing is that for the anti-parallels is the hydrogen bonds are parallel. Isn't that interesting? Okay, odd. Um, what you'll also notice is that the hydrogen bonds go, um, there's two hydrogen bonds in this residue, and there's none in the one next to it. And then there's two hydrogen bonds in this residue, and then there's none in the next one. So that's how I suggest uh, you draw the anti-parallel. This one will be parallel. This means that the, the strands of the beta sheet are running in the same direction. So how we draw this, again I start with the nitrogen going down and make sure that you do the zigzag lines. NCC. C. N. C. C. Now if you notice, I'm pretty sure I've started this the same way that I started the anti-parallel. But for the parallel, you need to make sure that both strands look identical. So I'm going to put the second one, nitrogen, hydrogen, and just make sure they run along the same way. So that the top strand and the bottom strand match. Okay, so here again, these are parallel because we're going from N to C, and the second strand is also N to C. So that's what makes them parallel. So each, I guess I should have told you, each one of these is considered a strand, and when you put two or more strands together, you get a sheet. So each row is a strand. Two or more together are sheets. Okay, so the hydrogen bonds, where are they? They're actually at a diagonal. So I think I told you um, in class or in a previous video that we would 
have an example of hydrogen bonds that weren't perfectly lined up, that were off diagonal, and this is your example right here. So these are the hydrogen bonds in the anti-parallel that are actually at a kink. So if I asked you the question between the anti-parallel and the parallel sheets, which is stronger? So is So the question is between anti parallel versus parallel which assuming the same number of hydrogen bonds is stronger assume same number of H bond. Okay, well if you'll remember, the hydrogen bonds in the anti-parallel are in a straight line. That's the strongest hydrogen bond. In parallel, they're off to a kink. So if you assume the same number of hydrogen bonds between parallel and anti-parallel, the anti-parallel sheet is stronger than the parallel sheet because of the geometry of the hydrogen bonds. Kind of cool, huh? Okay, but where are the side chains? So if you think, the way that I think about the beta sheets is I think of them as a piece of paper. So the atoms of the um, that are participating in a hydrogen bond are within the plane of the paper, which means that the side chains are all running, <laughs> I don't even know, what did I just do there? Um, the side chains run above and below the plane of the paper. I'm just uh, picking some amino acids here. And let's see, is there anything else I want to say about this? I don't think so. That is all I have to say about secondary structures, so those are the three types of helices, alpha, 310 pi, and the two types of beta strands, um, parallel and anti-parallel. I drew for you how I would draw them, and, this, and we talked about where the side chains are, and I'm losing my train of thought, so I think I'll just end it there. Um, good luck on your homework, and I'll see you in class.